Welcome to the Leadership Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Jono White. I'm the founder and principal consultant of Clarity. We are an Australian-based consultancy that works with leaders around the world, and our passion is to invest in people to become everything they're meant to be in order to fill the world with healthy organizations that people love to work for and customers line up to buy from. The goal of this podcast is to invest in you and your leadership. If you're just joining us for the first time, then feel free to check out consultclarity.org. That's our website, consultclarity.org. We have so many free resources on there. The most popular being our seven questions on leadership series. We've had more than 1,500 leaders from around the world in all different sectors give their in-depth answers on leadership, what books they love, what they found most challenging, uh, the most meaningful stories, how they, how they structure their time through the day. That's free, so go and check it out. And we'd love to interview you about your leadership. I believe you have advice from your experience, your context, and your life so far that is important and can help other leaders. It's also a great way to give back. It's free to get involved, and you can do so by going to consultclarity.org forward slash seven dash questions dash interest, or just Google consultclarity.org seven questions interest and fill out the form that pops up. We have a free resource for you on our website. It's called Leadership Survival Guide. It's a 57 page ebook. It has interviews with 10 world class leaders, and you can go to consultclarity.org. It's right at the top and get that today. Uh, we also have a daily email that we send out to over 15,000 leaders, and that email contains the highlights, our best content from our podcasts, our blog, uh, my book, uh, the books that we're loving that are out there about leadership. It's also the best way to get access to our masterclasses and workshops before anyone else. And there's also exclusive and limited uh, special options just for subscribers. And you can subscribe by going to consultclarity.org forward slash subscribe. Now, my gift to you is to work incredibly hard to provide the best leadership content I can to invest in you and your leadership. So if you're finding our content helpful, if you find this podcast helpful, then your gift to me uh, could be this. If you, if you do find it helpful, then write a review or rate our content and make sure you subscribe or follow. I can't emphasize enough how helpful that is. It really does help us to get the word out there so we can invest in more leaders to become everything they're meant to be. It also means a lot to me personally when people like you and people in our community share our content on social media. So if you do that, then please do look for me, Jono White, to tag me and look to tag Clarity uh, on whatever platform you're on. And our team, including me, I'm always looking to see when people have mentioned us so that I can engage with you. And also we look at sharing content. So if you you write something about something we've done, there's also a good chance we'll share that with our followers. So if you could do that, that is a massive, massive help as we try to invest in as many leaders as we can around the world. Last of all, you can check out my book about how to deal with difficult people even if you hate conflict. It's called Step Up or Step Out. It's available on Amazon. You can just look up Step Up or Step Out, John O'White, or you can go to store.consultclarity.org forward slash book and check it out there. I have coached leader after leader after leader, and in more than 50% of the sessions, this topic comes up. How do I deal with this person? I'm finding it really difficult, and, and I just want to find a way that doesn't blow up to do a really, just to have a difficult conversation, to lead them better. How do I do that? There's a three-step process that I outline in this book that I believe can help you. Okay, let's get into today's episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast. Enjoy. Welcome to another episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast. Today's guest is Tom English. Tom is the founder of Three Stewardships. Welcome to the podcast, Tom. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, uh, to, to kick us off, tell us a little bit about Three Stewardships and, and a little bit about what you do. So the whole point of Three Stewardships is really about empowerment and empowerment in a particular sort of way. It's really about helping people to 
get to know themselves a lot better and a lot deeper than they ever have done before. The focus is really about values and about individuals' values and connecting with those values in a context. Because we've all seen those sort of corporate exercises where somebody comes in and gives you a list of about 30 or 40 individual values and asks you to rank those things according to your top five. And, and, th and there's, no, there's really no context to those sort of exercises because who knows, one day safety might be your highest value if you're feeling particularly under, under threat or if you're feeling unwell, then, then health is probably your highest value in that context. And those things mm. are going to be high values anyway. So there needs to be context to the values that we have, the things that we do value in terms of the, the, the end states that we aspire to obtain and also the modes of conduct, the, the modes of conduct that we adopt in how we do things as well. So that's really the, the cotton thrust of three stewardships. But in terms of outcomes for people, it's really about not just helping people to get to know themselves better, but the purpose of helping people to know themselves better is so that they can connect with their path and their purpose in life. So it isn't that I tell anybody, well, your path and your purpose is X or yours is Y. It's that I give people the tools through which they can make those discoveries themselves through greater understanding and appreciation of their own values, but appreciating mm. those values in a particular context as well. Yeah, great. That's so interesting. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing a bit more of that as we as we hear some of your story. Um, on that note, it'd be great to hear, uh, I guess, from you, some of those moments in your life, even all the way back to your childhood that really shaped you becoming Tom, the leader and, and the person you are today. Yeah, it's a really good question. And the chat that we had just prior to coming on was interesting because you mentioned childhood then as well. I thought, gosh, could I really trace three stewardships back to childhood? And I think the answer is yes. I think the answer is yes, because very much three stewardships is about values and values discovery within the individual, but it's also about principle-centered values as well. And I had a solid upbringing, I would say, in terms of getting taught some really good, solid, timeless principles, which helped me along my way. And I stuck to I stuck to a lot of those principles. And I found that when I did, I was able to have good outcomes. And I wasn't I wasn't going off the, the beaten track, so to speak. But there were times, of course, as there are with everybody, when you do try to do things your own way and you experiment and you you sometimes you sometimes realize that actually the grass isn't always green or on the other side. And there are reasons why these things are timeless principles and why these values are principle centered because they're like keys that will never rust. So I call these, these principles keys that will never rust. Mm. So I got an appreciation of how powerful these things were and what it really means for them to be timeless in the sense that it doesn't matter the person, the opinions, whatever it is, these things just work. And so I started to lean into that and learn a lot more about what these principle centered values are and more particularly how to apply them in life as well. And I found that when yeah. I as I became better at actually applying them and actually living them, because that's where the rubber really meets the road. It's not about just preaching this stuff and, and putting it in the cupboard, so to speak. It's about living and applying these values. I found that the better I have become at applying these values, the better outcomes I get. And if I look at the antithesis of, of those things, then I think, well, yeah, what, what are the outcomes going to be? And it's kind of self-evident, really, when you look at it like that. So, so I suppose in, in some respects, it's been a, a logical approach looking at thesis and antithesis. But on the other hand, it's just simply observing. It's simply observing my own life, how yeah. I've lived my life, the outcomes that I've got, and also looking at other people as well. You know, what sort of outcomes have they got? What, what sort of outcomes have the people got who have been living by those principles and what about those who have have lived in the opposite way as well and, and you, we can mm. compare and contrast in in that sort of way and, and learn a lot from that yeah that's so interesting so for you as you think about the principles for your own life uh what are some of the defining moments for you around those principles like i mean i'm interested to know um because you've obviously thought a lot about this for other people and and uh, and for yourself are there are there moments that you that you can think of where it really forged principles or reinforced them or where the rubber hit the road and you had to really walk the talk mm. yeah absolutely yeah so, so a big one for me was when 
I was a missionary in Madagascar and it was very much expected that I would go on a mission for the church mm. and to be completely honest I, I made that decision for a lot, a lot, a lot of the, the lion's share of the, the decision that I made to go was based on the expectation that that I was going to go I'd been raised to go and that's what I've been taught by my parents my teachers at church and okay I went along and went off on the mission it didn't end up like that actually it changed over time and, and I grew to really love the experience and take ownership of it for myself and I had some very interesting experiences while I was there one experience was a man asked about whether or not and he, and he asked this question in English because I was in Madagascar and at that point I was very new to the country and I didn't speak the language very well at all but this gentleman approached on the street it was a Sunday evening the street was dead it was about nine going on half nine and he asked us if if he should cheat on his wife and it was absolutely bizarre because why on earth would someone just ask you if, mm. if they should cheat on their wife and it was very strange to to be asked that question at 19 years old and it was very clear that we couldn't give any answer that related to God or Jesus or sin, anything like that. But we had to, you know, the, the task was, the gauntlet was, you tell me why I shouldn't do it, but don't rely on anything that is religious. And it was quite straightforward in some respects because th th there were a couple of things that I drew on to make him think that it might not be the best idea to go ahead and do it. One of those things was the question why do you care what I think for a start? Why, why are you asking to 19 year old kids whether you should do this mm. thing or not? Because yeah. otherwise you, you must already have some pretty significant doubt if you're asking to unknown 19 year old strangers on the street where they should go and, and have this dalliance. The other thing, however, was about, about his internal knowledge and his internal knowledge of himself. And this was a really, really crucial point, I think, because we, we spoke with, we spoke with him about this plan that he had because he, he had this this foolproof plan of how he was going to be able to do the deed so to speak and never be caught it would never be known his wife would never find out and I pointed out to him that actually he would know and he would know that his relationship with his wife would be based on a lie it would be based on a false premise after he'd done that act and that really stuck with him and he, that resonated with him, that idea of conscience and the fact that he's got a <laughs> conscience and that actually you can't run away from that. You can have the best plan in the world, but you can't run away from that. And so that for me was a really interesting moment because if, if you were to look at this man, he was, he was successful, particularly in the nation that he was in. Madagascar is a, a very poor country, but he was very successful in his own right. And he had a successful business. He had a big house. He had the car and everything else. But I realized that just because people have those things, just because people have the material wealth, they have the status and the money and whatnot, does not mean that they have it figured out. It does not mean that they are free from temptations and distractions. These things are ubiquitous. These temptations and these distractions, they manifest differently for all of us, but they are, they are ubiquitous. And I had, to come, I had to come face to face with my own distractions and temptations when I returned from Madagascar mm. back to the UK and started yeah. university. So I had to kind of live this, this thing myself and have my own distractions and temptations, which were different to the gentleman in Madagascar, but distractions and temptations nonetheless. And, and working my way through that process really started me on the path to developing three stewardships and the programs associated with it. Yeah. Wow. What a story. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's that's, a lot more. <laughs> that, that, that's a very short version. Yeah, that's fascinating. And, um, but I love the perspective of, um, and it's, it's such a good reminder. It's, it's, it's so, it seems so obvious, but it's not when, whenever you're considering something and, and to go away well, wait a second, there's one person who will, who will always know about this and who will have to live with this and it's, and it's me uh, yes. or for this guy saying, and that's you. Um, yeah, that's, that's uh, a really wise thought. Um, what about since, uh, since pioneering three stewardships and, uh, you know, uh, are there any moments that really stand out in the journey so far that have been pivotal for you as you've been uh, leading and, 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 you know, starting an organization and um, any, any real sort of watershed moments for you so far where 
it, it just sticks in your mind for some reason? Oh gosh, yes. Now th this is an interesting question because I've, I've literally, I'm just looking in my office now and I've got three journals that are stacked full of those sort of moments. There, there are several and, and the way I look at it and the way that I talk to people who work with me, the way that I talk to my clients about this is that there are breadcrumbs along the trail breadcrumbs along the trail so if you think about in a fairy tale for example you sometimes read these stories where the characters have to follow breadcrumbs that are in front of them they can only see one crumb at a time and they follow this trail and it leads them to a particular destination i feel as though it's been like that with me in relation to three stewardships where i have had have had one thing that's come to me and they're like wow that's amazing in fact even even the whole premise of three stewardships the, the biggest watershed moment was at the inception of it when i figured out that my role was to be a mentor and to give people values related guidance i really needed to get together a framework and get together a program and i was mulling this over and i had been speaking with people already as my beta clients if you like but I didn't have a full program fleshed out yet. And this was just between Christmas and New Year of 2018, 2019. And unbeknown to me at the time, I wasn't, I wasn't entirely well at the time. I, was, I kept waking up in the middle of the night with these night sweats. It was really weird. It actually turned out, and this is completely incidental, but it turned out that I had gallstones, believe it or not. Oh, wow. And anyway, I was, I was being, my sleep was being disturbed in the night. And this one particular night, I woke up and... The dog, I think the dog had nudged the door open, the bedroom door open, and I was awake anyway. And it just came to me in my mind as if somebody was speaking to me that I was to mentor in relation to stewardship. Very, very specific, very clear. I was to mentor in relation to stewardship and that there were three areas of stewardship that I was to focus on. Self, relationships and contributions those three areas were what I was to focus on linking that to stewardship. And it was like, wow, this was something <laughs> for me, this was something kind of biblical in the middle of the night. I've had many spiritual experiences. And like I say, I've had many since that's what all the journals are talking about as well. That I've been writing in. Yeah. But this one was a real watershed moment because wow. I got up and I wrote it down. I went to my office and I wrote it down. I was like, bang, this is the plan. This is the program. And ever since then, things have been fleshed out more extensively and the program is is live and kicking now but it was a really really powerful moment for me was that because that showed me that this this path that i'm on it's not just about what i think is a good idea this this was given to me and so i'm i'm following a particular program on it and from from that point many more things have come to me in order to build the program out but also in relation to, like I said before, the principles, you know, these value, these, these principle centered values that can really transform people's lives. And, and they've transformed my life as well. I, I wouldn't say that, that I, I have everything ex nihilo, as it were, just, just as if it was just already created. I have to work on this stuff as well. I have to practice these things as well. And so as I've been learning more about these things and my application has improved, I've got more breadcrumbs along the trail to go even further forward. That's incredible. Wow. I love hearing stories like that, uh, particularly in the context of leadership, because I obviously um, with, with leadership, we're so often talking strategy and talking, um, yeah. you know, but, uh, but when you, when you do dig a bit deeper, there's always, uh, you know, really fascinating and interesting moments in everyone's journey. And that's uh, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, pleasure. What about uh, in your work so far? Are there any favorite stories in terms of working with uh, clients and helping them around uh, their values and, and seeing breakthrough and in, in really getting mm. clear and, and, and living out some real values? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There, there are several that are dotted about. I love, I love the outcomes that people get from this, whether it's changing their careers, whether it's transforming their relationships with the families transforming the way that they look at themselves and, and their pathways there are there are several different anecdotes and stories that that i can draw on one of my favorites and it, it's always the the intangible the, or the, the the less tangible things i should say that really stand out to me for example 
one client that I was working with last year, I remember his his dad had been in an accident and it was quite a, a serious accident, which thankfully he survived, but he needed quite a bit of rehabilitation. And my client told me that he was helping his dad to rehabilitate and he was drawing on what I taught him in the sessions about stewardship and that every single day he thought about what I taught him about stewardship and the, the meaning of stewardship and he was living it and that not to be too gushy about it but I was singing inside <laughs> I was I was really really excited inside because I thought that is it that's exactly it I'm not here to just give people more information there are so many books in the world people are publishing books left right and center because there are so many platforms to do so now I'm not just another voice that's giving giving my philosophy on how things should be done I'm, I'm here to empower people to change the way that they live and in changing the way that they live in changing their habits they're able to make better contributions to others and then they're able to get better results and those better results sometimes they're better relationships and they're feeling better about themselves but then other times they they're changing their careers they're making more money as well so it's really all-encompassing and it's, it's been amazing to me how each person that has worked with me has come to me as an individual and of course we we all know we are all individuals we are all unique but the program works for everyone and i've i've absolutely loved it because i almost feel like there's been a there's, there's been some guidance so to speak in terms of who's come to me because it's such a diverse mix of people but essentially it's people who really want to really want to transform their lives people who really want to get to know themselves better in relation to their values people who want to transform move forward and really pursue their version of success their version of success not what somebody else is telling them should be their version of success but really linking into their values and then building out from there to to, to do what it is that, that they've been put on this earth to do. It's, it's not, it's not a small thing. And I don't, I don't say this lightly because it does take time. And like I say, I've got quite an extensive program that relates to this, but I, I love it. I love the work, John. I, I really do. I think mm. it's so the, the principles are so powerful that when people put them into practice, it doesn't matter who they are or where they're coming from. They could be a CEO, they could be a janitor, but they will, make a difference when people live those principles they will change they will transform and very much for the better yeah that's uh that's incredible and i, I love uh, i love your work and, and what you're doing and i think um i think there's there aren't many things that are more transformational than articulating what those values are and mm and then getting really clear about them and, and making that decision to, to live by them. It sounds simple. It probably is simple, but it's, it's very difficult. I think it's, it's, it's hard yeah. work. And so I can see why people would need your help to actually do that process for themselves and their organizations. Yeah. It's, it's really tricky. And going back to what you asked about previously, Jono, in terms of defining moments, it was when I got back from my mission in Madagascar and I had to get back into the real world again, so to speak, that I realized how difficult it is because we live in a world full of distractions, temptations, and challenges. And that's where we are. That's the same for every single person. And those things are going to appear differently to different people because different, pe different things are going to be more tempting to different people and, and so on and so forth. So essentially, at certain times, we need a guide. And talking about leadership which is very much the focus of of this podcast leadership is about going before for me you can talk about it in in various different ways you can talk about leadership being about helping other people to see things inside themselves that that, that they couldn't see before i agree with that uh, that comes from Stephen r covey a bit of an ad lib there that i've done for that also steve jobs spoke about innovation distinguishing between a leader and a follower but essentially, however you look at it, a leader is somebody who goes first. So this is where I come in with, with mentoring in relation to leadership. A mentor is a guide. A mentor is somebody who has been there before. They've walked the road for themselves before, and they know what that, that road looks like. They know the gist of it from a principal point of view. And so that, that's where I 
come in and that's how I can relate to people is because I have because I've st stumbled and fallen and made mistakes myself that's how I can relate to people and that's how I can help to teach them the principles so that they can get back up again they can go again or they can just reconnect with themselves because the situation I was in was such that I was mm. really disconnected with myself and I think disconnection mm. is a big problem in the world today we again so many distractions so many temptations we can sleepwalk our way into situations that we never intended to be all yeah. too easily if you were going to I mean if there are people listening who are going yeah this is really something I often often I feel like these sort of things are on your radar the, the, or you're aware that you're sort of, oh, man, I'm just a bit unsettled because my mm. organization or even for an entrepreneur or, or even just for a leader to go, my personal values, there's something that I'm doing that's grinding against them, but maybe they, they haven't been able to articulate that until now they're listening going, maybe that's what's happening. What, what advice would you give as a starting point to someone who's wanting to explore this and wanting to really start going down this road of, of articulating and, and living by, you know, some really real true values? It's a good question. And sometimes it's a case of figuring out when change occurred, when, when a negative change occurred, when you, when you first started to notice that things were, were starting to go south, where were you? Who were you with? What were you doing? What were you thinking about? What were your habits? Or what are your habits looking at things like that because the environment that we create for ourselves and that we allow ourselves to spend time in has a very big impact on how we how we live our lives and the values that that we live by if you think about a friendship group for example if you hang out with friends who love football and following football teams going to football matches is a big part of that friendship group then guess what you're going to be thinking and talking about football more than you would if you were hanging out with people who preferred bowling or basketball instead so we've got to think carefully about retracing our steps to some extent but also looking at what we're doing right now in in the present moment what are our our, our habits now who are we hanging out with now what are are the inputs that we allow in our lives as well what, what are we listening to? What podcasts are we listening to? What films are we watching? What music are we listening to? All these things have a massive impact on us. They, they change our brains. Our brains are phenomenal and they're changing all the time. We, we learn that in relation to neuroplasticity, that our brain changes itself. And so if we are, it goes back to, I think it was James Allen who wrote the book As a Man Thinker, one of those classics. He, he wrote about, the mind being like a garden and us as individuals having a responsibility to be gardeners, to be stewards, if you like, over our minds. So we determine what grows in the garden. And if we allow weeds to grow that are going to kill off the good plants, then that's, then that's a choice. And sometimes it's a choice that is made passively by by omission rather than commission it, it's that we don't make a choice and so all the things that, that come naturally all the things that feel easy all the things that are thrust in front of us on the tv or on social media on the feed or just by friendship groups that have just meandered and moseyed along for however many years those things are going to determine how we live our lives so it's really really important to take ownership of that and to start to see ourselves as being the gardeners so to speak the mind is a garden and we are the gardeners and, and when mm. we step into that and we recognize that that is when we can really start to lean into our values and what sort of garden we want our minds to be and what we want to create of it yeah brilliant yeah i love that thought that the mind is a garden we are the gardeners that's good <laughs> well let's oh, jump into not, not mine. <laughs> no no that's right yeah yeah Let's jump into Leadership Express. I've got a bunch of questions for you. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah, hit me. Okay. Firstly, what is a book that you've gifted to others? There are several. There are two that come to mind more than any others. And they are The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey, which had a big impact on me in getting into this particular world of, of self-improvement and transformation. Timeless book in, in and of itself. 
And another book, which is absolutely fantastic, is Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning, which I've given to at least three people, because that is phenomenal in expressing <laughs> how we really are in control of our minds and, and our mind, regardless of the circumstances that we're in, our mind is really the only thing that we can control. Even when every, every other freedom has been taken away, we can still control our minds. So yeah, those are my, true. those are my top two, I'd say in that respect. Yeah. They're, they're brilliant recommendations. Now uh, be great for you to mention your podcast and also any other podcasts you're really enjoying right now. Yeah, absolutely. So my podcast is Real Clear Values, and this is a really far-reaching exploration into values. So I speak with people from all sorts of walks of life and expertise. I speak with academics in philosophy, in history. I speak with people in relation to drug abuse. I speak with people in relation to corporate governance, which is a huge part of leadership, and really just dig into their respective topics it's it's great fun i really enjoy doing it and it's it's just very much a feast of of new knowledge in relation to values in the multiple applications that that they have in terms of in terms of other podcasts that i enjoy i listen to a lot in which through which i can learn so some of them I, i've got to say i've i've sloped off listening to podcasts i'm more of an audiobook kind of guy at the moment but in terms of in terms of the general types of podcasts that I listen to, I'm not necessarily listening to any consistently, except for the fact that I have a topic that I want to learn about. And then I go and find podcasts and audiobooks on those particular topics. And that, that's really how how I define it. So I'll listen to things probably episode by episode rather than I, I'll pick an episode here and there, but I won't necessarily listen to to one particular podcast religiously that that that's how that's how i roll maybe maybe people might might disagree with that approach but but i i, I have a very clear idea of what i'm trying to learn about so i i pick mm. and choose a bit like a buffet yeah no that's good i like it what's a great piece of advice you've received a great piece of advice that i've received is something that i mentioned in my tedx talk and it comes back to a question it's, it's a question that goes, who do you love? My mentor asked me that, who do you love, Tom? When I had got myself into a situation where I was just sleepwalking my way around and not really focusing on other people, I was focusing on having a good time, whatever that looked like when I was at, at university. And it kind of manifested itself in a similar way to the boys on Pleasure Island in Pinocchio. And my mentor, when he was helping me to escape that particular situation and that particular mindset that I'd sleep walk my way into, he asked me the question, who do you love, Tom? And that question, although it wasn't a piece of advice per se, it was incredibly directive and it helped me immensely to focus more on other people and to genuinely care about other people more because mm. that is the foundation of, of real meaningful success. We can, we can talk about it as an abstract concept, but it's, it's very, very practical. It's very yeah. applicable. And it's something that, that really does care. You know, you talk about love, you talk about just caring for other people, caring for colleagues, caring for, for the people that you lead, caring for partners, for customers. Mm -hmm. that, will, that will get you success the, the vast majority of the time. And if it doesn't, yeah. then, then there are other things to look at. But simply caring, really caring, you will find the answers to people's problems and you will find out ways to solve those problems without any shadow of a doubt, if you really care. Yeah, that's good. And um, I, I agree. That's a great philosophy. Uh, what's a movie or TV show that really impacted you? I was having this conversation today with my wife, actually, about films. and what, What's your favourite film and, and TV programmes? There, there are so many that have stuck with me over the years. I am going to go for a classic in relation to this. I'm, I'm going to go for Ben-Hur and Ben-Hur, the original Ben Hur with Charlton Heston from gosh, when was it originally produced? I think it was in the 1950s. It's such a great story about, about essentially, I, I don't want to give too much away, but it's essentially about the idea of, of pursuing higher values, values that, that really produce meaning values that really produce connection with, with family, with, with, 
deity, divinity, whatever you want to call it, versus materialism and status and power and wealth. And it, it's a very interesting look at that sort of dichotomy. Mm. It's, it's a very long film. It's three and a half to four hours or so. But it tells a beautiful story about what really constitutes wealth in life. And that is it, it's stuck with me over time. It's influenced me over time. And I've, I've ruminated on it often. And I, as I've seen people who have really made it big and they're really successful, I've realized that 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 material success does not necessarily equate to a life of fulfillment, a life of purpose, a life that is meaningful and that really gives deep satisfaction. Yeah. So I think it's really important for people to to bear in mind that even even if you have made it, quote unquote, in a material sense, never, ever lose contact or alignment with your values, because that's where that's where the real fulfillment lies. It's not in chasing the next big deal. It's not in getting the, the yacht or whatever it is, because that stuff might be nice. It might be fun. It might give you more convenience in life. But that's not why you started doing what you're doing. I'm willing to mm. bet. I'm willing to bet that people who've <laughs> become successful, they started out with with a hunger, with a passion to make a difference. And and so it's I think it's really important to keep keep focus on that. Yeah, that's good, Tom. Uh, last question. If you could only give one piece of leadership advice to a young leader, what would you say? That's a good one. Only one. <laughs> there, there, there are several. Of course, the, the question is only one. So I will I will honor the question and, and stick to only one. I would say for, for me in relation to the work that I do, it, it would always be true to yourself and your best values. Always be true. And that is easier said than done because mm. I've worked on a board before. I was on a board for seven years mm-hmm. and I saw some of the tensions that arose there mm. where values are called into question and the, the lines between right and wrong can become very blurred when people try to rationalize things. And it is very, very important to always be true to yourself and to your very best principles because yeah. they, they will be challenged. It's not, if you are in a leadership position, it's not a question of if they'll be challenged or if there'll be exceptions raised or, or put into view. It's, it's when those things will be questioned, when they'll be put to the test. My, my recommendation is always be true. Yeah, that's great. Uh, for those who are really loving your content and, uh, and want to find you, find your podcast, maybe contact you and, and uh, get in touch about, about even working with you, where, what's the best way for people to contact you online, Tom, and yeah, find okay. you online? Yeah, so I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. I should be fairly easy to find on LinkedIn. I'm Tom English. My, my URL is Tom English. The, the, the appendage is Tom English 3S if I'm not mistaken. Alternatively, you can get me through the website as well, which is three, that's the number three, stewardships.com. So three stewardships.com is a good place to find me. If you're interested in the podcast, there's, there's some really, really interesting stuff on there with all sorts of different people in, in various different areas. You can find that on all the major podcast suppliers, such as Apple, Spotify, etc. And that is Real Clear Values with Tom English. If you type in Real Clear Values, then that should be sufficient. You should should be able yeah. to find it from there. Fantastic. Well, uh, this has been great. I, I believe so deeply in the importance of values. I've loved having having Tom on. I want to thank our listeners for tuning in. And I know this would have been timely for some of you. So uh, always be true. Great, uh, great advice there from Tom. Don't forget, I also have the John O'White Leadership Podcast where I give you more traditional you know, tips on casting vision and how to build a high performance team and leadership question of the day where I ask you a different question every day to put a stone in your shoe and <laughs> make you a bit uncomfortable as a leader but i want to finish today by saying a massive thank you to tom for coming on and and for uh not only today but in your life for investing in in such an important and significant topic it's been great chatting with you thanks for your time tom my pleasure thank you jonna 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast as much as I did. If you're joining us for the first time, don't forget to check out consultclarity.org. That's our website, consultclarity.org. We have so many free resources on there, including our seven questions on leadership series. We've had more than 1,500 leaders from all over the world in all different roles, in different industries, answer these seven questions on leadership and leaders give these in-depth answers around how they spend their time, uh, a book that's been significant for them. It's just a gold mine. It's completely free to access. So go to consultclarity.org and look for that. We'd also love to interview you about your leadership. I believe your experience, your life, your context means that you have advice on leadership that other leaders can learn from. Yes, you, if you're going, not me. Well, no, I really believe you would have something to add. So if you're looking for a way to give back, it's completely free to get involved. And we would love to interview you through the seven questions on leadership. You just go to consultclarity.org forward slash seven dash questions dash interest or Google consultclarity.org seven questions interest and fill out the form and get involved. We have a free resource on our website called the Leadership Survival Guide. It's a 57 page ebook, 10 world-class leaders giving their thoughts on leadership and that's completely free. It's available on our homepage, consultclarity.org right at the top. So make sure you go and get that and download it today. And we have a free daily email that you can subscribe to. We send this out to over 15,000 leaders from around the world. And uh, it contains the highlights of content from our podcasts, our blogs, um, our books, books we're reading. It's got the best content and it gives you exclusive, limited early access to our masterclasses, workshops, new products, special offers. It's all for our subscribers. You can go to consultclarity.org forward slash subscribe and join 15,000 other leaders And you know, my gift to you is to work really hard, particularly through the Leadership Conversations podcast. I have been blown away by the quality of the leaders and I'm learning as much as anyone in doing these interviews. So I'm having a great time. And my gift to you is to keep lining up the best leaders I can to invest in your leadership. Your gift to me, if you're finding this helpful, there is something that you could do that would help us out massively. And that is to write a review and to leave a rating for our podcast or wherever you're watching or listening to this, I can't tell you how much that helps us out. Also subscribe or follow. It really does make a difference in helping us to help more leaders become everything they're meant to be. Another thing that means a lot to me personally is when I see our community share our content. So if you do share this or any other piece of content on social media, then thank you and and please do that. And look for me, John O. White, or clarity and tag us in your post. Our team is always looking for posts to engage with from our community. And there's also a chance that we'll share your content uh, to go beyond and share it with our followers. Last of all, you can check out my book. It's called Step Up or Step Out, How to Deal with Difficult People Even If You Hate Conflict. I wrote this book because 50% of the coaching sessions I have with leaders, this topic comes up again and again and again. And it's this idea of how do I have this difficult conversation? How do I lead this person better when I'm finding them difficult? Or in some cases you look and you say, I think I might be leading a difficult person. They're just quite difficult to lead or I'm finding them quite difficult to lead. So there's a three-step process that I unpack in step up or step out. And the amazing thing, and I've literally done this myself and I've heard it anecdotally from other leaders as I've coached them, is that if you follow this process, you will see that person step up and change their behavior or make a decision, which is to step out some of the time. Uh, 95% of the time, people will step up or step out in just four weeks. And I stand by that. It's, uh, you have to read the book to understand, but uh, I really do believe in it and I've experienced it firsthand, it works. So you can go to Amazon, look up Step Up or Step Out John O. White or store.consultclarity.org forward slash book. Well, thank you so much for listening. We're going to be back with a new episode next time of the Leadership Conversations podcast. And I hope today has helped you to take another step towards becoming the leader you're meant to be. See you next time.